Hi, my name is Xiaohui Zhou. I'm a principal engineer at Slipstream. Today, let's look at the air handling unit supplier temperature and pressure reset strategies. We're going to talk about energy savings and versus efforts first, then introduce the concept of reset. Following that, I'm going to discuss why temperature reset saves energy and how to reset air hand unit's temperature, and why static pressure reset saves energy and how to estimate the cooling load. Finally, we're going to discuss the best practices for both strategies. Let's look at the PNNL study on energy savings versus effort first. We have talked about some of the high savings and low effort strategies in previous sessions. Today, let's look at the number five and number eight, air handling unit temperature and pressure reset strategies. These two strategies can achieve medium savings with medium effort. Let's first look at the concept of reset. What is a reset? You probably have seen this picture from the introduction to control loop session in the fundamentals of building controls module. A reset is changing the set point of a control loop based on a factor or indicator that is not part of the control loop. This picture shows that outdoor air temperature sensor could be used as an indicator to reset the space temperature set point. Compared to a fixed temperature set point 76 or 75 degrees all year round, in hot summer, you probably can change the temperature higher to about 78 or 79 degrees. And in cold winter, you probably can change the temperature set point lower to about 70 or 72. People may feel more comfortable actually, and HVAC system will run shorter time. Therefore, this reset can save you some energy. Now, before we look at air handling unit supply air temperature reset, let's take a quick look how an air handling unit works. In a forced air system, an air handling unit uses supply fan to blow conditioned cold air into space through supply air duct. The speed of the fan can be adjusted using variable speed drive or VSD. Variable air volume terminal units or VV boxes are used to control the air flows and the temperatures to the zones using dampers and reheat coils. So these are all VV boxes and zones are in here. The cooling capacity of the air handling unit is proportional to the air flow rate and the difference of supply air temperature and return air temperature. Air handling unit temperature reset is changing the air handling unit supply air temperature higher or lower based on an indicator that is not part of the control loop. With higher supply air temperature, the difference between supply air temperature and return temperature will be smaller. The fan will run faster because the system needs more airflow to deliver the same amount of cooling. But less cooling energy will be used for the chillers and less reheat energy are needed for the VV terminal units. Most of the time, the thermal energy savings outweigh fan energy increase in cold weather. In hot weather, it's the opposite the supplier temperature need to be reset lower and the fan energy savings will be higher than the thermal energy increase. So essentially, air handling unit temperature reset strategy is a trade-off between thermal energy and fan energy. Several indicators can be used for temperature reset. The simplest one is the outside air temperature, like this chart shows. You can reset the temperature set point proportionally within a range typically from 55 to 65 based on outside air temperature. Higher the outside air temperature, lower the air handling unit supply air temperature and vice versa. If the outside air temperature is lower than OAT min or higher than OAT max, the supply air temperature won't increase or decrease further. 
Another way of doing temperature reset is based on the combination of worst case room cooling demand and outside air temperature, like it's shown in this chart. In the yellow region, reset air handling unit temperature based on worst case room cooling demand, which is represented by either the maximum VV terminal unit damper position or comparing the difference between zone temperature and the zone temperature set point. The current best practice of temperature reset is written in the ASHRAE Guidelines 36, High Performance Sequence of Operations for HVAC Systems. This is based on the combination of comparing zone temperature to their set points and VV terminal unit cooling control loop output, which ranges from zero to 100%. The guideline recommends that if zone temperature exceeds the cooling set point by five degrees, generate three requests. If the zone temperature exceeds the cooling set point by three degrees, generate two requests. When any of the terminal unit cooling control loop output greater than 95%, generate one request. For a multi-zone system, you add all these number of requests together then use the total number of requests to trim or respond to air handling unit set point. This is called trim and respond method. In here, trim means increasing air handling unit supplier temperature set point and respond means decreasing temperature set point. The system will respond to more cooling requests by decreasing supplier temperature set point. Recently, a new method of doing temperature reset just emerged. This method is based on the minimum total energy cost. It is more complicated because it needs electricity, hot water prices, chiller plant efficiency, and fan motor horsepower information. Because temperature reset is a trade-off between fan energy change and the thermal energy change, and the goal is to reduce the overall energy cost, in this strategy, the total cost will be evaluated periodically by assuming the supplier temperature will be moved up or down by a small amount like 0.3 degrees. And then the total energy cost changes will be compared to decide which direction the supplier temperature should move to in the next half hour or hour. University of California Berkeley Taylor Engineering and TRC has conducted the research Field test results shows that this method produced more energy savings than other reset strategies. Now let's look at the static pressure reset. Similar to the temperature reset strategy, static pressure reset is also required by ASHRAE 90.1 or California Title 24 energy codes. Let's look at this chart of percentage fan power versus percentage airflow. The curves with different colors represent these nonlinear relationships under different static pressure set points. In a typical design, the air handling unit static pressure set point is typically at 1.5 or 2.0 inch water column, the green curve. Of course, at full load, the supply fan needs to run at 100% speed and 100% full power to deliver 100% designed airflow. At partial load conditions though, multiple static pressure can be used to satisfy the same airflow percentage, but the lower static pressure set point may potentially save 50% or more fan power. Let's use 50% airflow as an example. If the system runs under 1.5 inch water column, the green curve, the fan power is at around 28% of full power. Here. If we lower the static pressure to about 0.5 inch water column, the purple curve, we can see the fan power can be lowered to about 18% of full power. That's in here. That's about 35% of fan energy savings. While we care about partial load conditions, that's because for a variable air volume system, most of the time, the system runs under partial load conditions. Look at this chart. The x-axis represent airflow bins in terms of cubic feet per minute. 
The y-axis represents how long the system run under a certain airflow beam. For this chart, the full load condition is at around 80,000 CFM over here. But this full load condition only may be run about one or two days per year. Most of the time, the system runs between 50 to 60,000 CFM or 20 to 25,000 CFM during night. So if we can let the building automation system automatically reset the static pressure based on cooling demand, potentially a lot of fan energy can be saved. So what are the options to estimate the cooling demand? One of them is still the outside air temperature. It's the simplest one. Using this method, one can increase air handling unit static pressure when outside air temperature is higher and decrease it when outside air temperature is lower. However, this indicator does not closely reflect the true cooling demand for the building. Another way of doing it is reset static pressure set point based on the percentage of real-time airflow to design. Lower the airflow percentage, lower the static pressure set point. This approach needs an airflow station to be installed. Airflow stations are typically expensive, need routine maintenance, and not very accurate. 5% of accuracy is considered pretty good. Or you can also use summation of all the VAV terminal unit airflows. The summation should be equal to the air hang unit airflow. But in reality, the two numbers could be way off because of uh, various uh, problems such as VV box sensor errors or duct leakage or control network problems. So ASHRAE guideline 36 recommends using VV terminal unit maximum damper positions as indicators of cooling demand. A maximum VV damper position means the zones is asking for more airflow and the air handling unit cannot deliver at current static pressure. If several such zones exist, the air handling unit static pressure need to be increased. You can adjust air hang unit static pressure based on the number of such zones or requests using the trim and respond method, which I will show you in the next slide. Using this method, you may often see rogue zones. Rogue zones are those zones that the damper positions are always at the maximum level due to improperly sized unit or improperly designed HVAC system duct or failed sensors, etc. These VV boxes need to be fixed or ignored. Here's an illustration of trim and response methods used to reset air hang unit static pressure. The bottom half is the number of requests, meaning counting how many VV terminal units dampers have reached 99% open or higher at the point in time. The upper half shows the static pressure set point change in this case, the algorithm ignores two requests. We can see when the number of requests is lower than three, either one, zero, or two, the set point is decreasing steadily every two minutes. This process is called trim. When the number of requests is higher than three, the set point is increasing every two minutes. Higher the number of requests, the rate of increase is also higher until the maximum rate of increase of 0.15 inch of water column per two minutes. This process is called respond, meaning the air hang unit system respond to more cooling demand requests by increasing the static pressure. So let's compare good and bad indicators for demand. Good indicators are VV damper positions, VV control loop output, VV airflow versus set point, or zone temperature versus set point. Bad indicators include VV damper open and closed status. Some VV dampers only have two position feedback, open or close. That's not a good indicator for demand. Outside air temperature, return air temperature, and air hand unit air flow rate are also bad indicators. ASHRAE guideline 36 suggests for a static pressure reset, 
use trim and response method based on number of maximum damper positions or requests. For temperature reset, use trim and response method based on the overall demand, which means zone temperature versus set point and cooling control loop output. Here's a summary of today's discussion. Both air hand unit supply air temperature and static pressure resets can save energy. There are different ways of implementing these reset strategies. The best practice is using ASHRAE guideline 36, reset static pressure based on the number of EV maximum damper positions, and reset temperature based on overall cooling demand. It's worth mentioning that there is a new method for temperature reset. This method has the potential to save the most energy, but may be a little bit more complicated. This is the end of this short presentation. Thanks for watching.